Archie. Betty. Veronica. Jughead. I'm Cheryl Blossom. For one shining moment, we were just kids. The bright neon lights of Pops keeping the darkness at bay. Welcome to Riverdale the official podcast of the critically acclaimed new series on the CW. Every week, we're going to be meeting with the stars and creators of Riverdale to discuss each and every ongoing chapter and the secrets of what happens behind the scenes that makes it all tick. I'm your host, Bob Barth, and with me this week is creator and showrunner. Folks, it doesn't get bigger than this. Roberto Aguirre is casa. Roberto, thank you so much for sitting down with us. I am so happy to be here. You're an incredibly busy man, not only running around, finishing up, editing on several different episodes, but we just started shooting episode 13, the season we, finale. We did. We are we are in the thick of it, in the thick of the last chapter. I cannot believe it. Can, and that's, that's really why I, I want to talk to you today. Um, Archie has been with you forever. Yeah, yeah. When, when did he first enter your life? You know... It's, it's, I, uh, you know, of course I, I started out as a fan of Archie and I, you know, I remember being a kid and buying Archie comics at, at 7-Eleven off the spinning racks that they used to have. This was kind of before comic books existed. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would go with my mom and, and, and over summer we would, I'd get a Slurpee and I'd buy comic books and I bought, uh, uh, superhero comics. Sure. I bought, uh, back then they had, they had kind of, um. The horror comics like House of Secrets, House, the old House of Secrets, the old House of Mystery, and I would buy the Archie comics, and and afterwards, I you know, and I'd read all the comics, and then afterwards, the only the art that I was most drawn to was the Archie art. Uh, wow. You know, it ha the house style was was quite cartoony, mm -hmm. uh, and it was in, in compared to the superhero stuff and compared to the um, the uh, the the horror stuff. It, it seemed simpler to draw, and I loved drawing back then, so I would draw. Now, wow. looking back, you know, the, the Archie house style or the Archie drawing style is actually, it's simple, but it's not easy. Oh, okay. And, and uh, uh, but that's, that's kind of what I did. I would draw my own Archie comics, and I would draw myself into them. So I would I would draw all the, the all the gang at school and then I would add myself as as a as a gang member as a member of the gang and it kind of and 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 really that that I feel is kind of what what what's at the core of my you know probably unhealthy obsession <laughs> uh, with these comic book characters is that when I was a kid and I read those books I wanted to be friends with those kids sure. and and and. I wanted w I wanted to go to uh, Riverdale High as my high school, yeah. and and there was something aspirational about it, and that that kind of stuck with me, uh, kind of as I grew up and grew older, and you know for a while stopped reading comic books, but kind of always kept kept tabs on Archie, and and I was fascinated by, uh, you know some some aspects of it. I was fascinated by this idea that they were eternally 16 on the verge of 17, you mm -hmm. know? And, and it, that's a little bit true of other comic book characters as well. But, but you know, not really. Peter Parker started in high school, and, and he got older, and he moved out of, uh, out of Queens. He started dating Mary Jane. He married Mary Jane. Sure, right. You know, they, they later, you know, annulled the marriage. Mephesto did. <laughs> but, but same with Batman. Batman had... Uh, Robin, but Robin grew up. He became Nightwing. Uh, uh, Batman took on another Robin. Robin died. Ro Batman took on a third Robin. Yeah. And 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 then second Ro Robin or third Robin got older and became, you know, there there was movement, albeit slowly. Right. I, the other the other things, but Archie, that never happened in Archie. They they almost seemed like uh, uh, almost like they'd either been cursed or it was like. <laughs> Brigadoon, you know what I mean? Right. It's like this place exists where no one grows old. Well, not only no one grows old, but the whole Riverdale universe from the books that I even grew up reading, it was out of time. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, the, the superhero comic books sort definitely change with the ages. You can tell a, a periodic change in the 70s and 80s and right. 90s. And Riverdale is this thing that, that exists out of time. Yeah. 
Well, it's interesting. You know, the um, one thing that we hear, or I used to hear a lot, less so now, but when I first started really working with Archie Comics and I'd kind of go around and talk to people at conventions and shows and things like that is a lot of people would say things like, you know, f the the horrifying thing is, oh, wait, is Archie still around? Do they oh. still publish? So that's sort of like a heartbreak, and it's like, yes. <laughs> and they're like, and it's still set in the 50s, right? And I and I, I, I would say, on the one hand, I'd get really indignant. I would say, uh, you know, that's that's absolutely wrong. You know, the Archies always reflect the fashion and trends, and 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 they're of the time period. But in in one way, in in very surface ways, sure. in 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 did if they had personal computers, they had iPhones, they the, you know during the eighties punk, there was an eighties punk, you know there were mm -hmm. they would reflect the fashion and pop culture a little bit. In the way, in one way though, they they were out of time. In is that their the adventures and the stories, and 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 what they were facing did feel. Trap and trapped and frozen in this 1950s Norman Rockwell yeah. kind of thing. So, so in that way, they were out of time, and there was always an anachronistic aspect to to the Archies. That 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 you know, while while in the 80s, you know, Batman was going super dark with the Dark Knight and Frank right. Miller. The Archies just didn't do that. It just they weren't they weren't interested in that. It right. it, it they they did seem frozen kind of preserved in amber and, and, and out of time. Uh, but that, that kind of fascinated me as well. And, and as comic books did get grittier and darker, and I would read them, uh, there was comfort in the Archie universe, and, there, and that, that did appeal to me as well. Uh, uh, so yeah, yeah, no, they, they, they're definitely out of time. And I think with, with Riverdale, the TV show, though it's set in 2017, it, its aesthetic is very much out of time. Like absolutely, like like there's definitely a retro vibe. The costumes have a classic quality, which is sort of like Archie could have walked out of uh, Rebel Without a Cause. Yeah. Or or he could ju you could just pluck him out of out of you know the Century City, Century City Mall right now. Absolutely. Um. Um. So that that's that's been a, a an aesthetic we've really really embraced and and makes the show a little bit weirder and 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 kind of um i think sometimes there's a danger with these shows where uh they immediately become dated mm -hmm. like the references are so up to the minute yeah uh and and there are some in riverdale there's definitely an engagement with pop culture but for every reference that's you know sort of from from what's happening right now there there's also sort of a timeless it, it it's in dialogue with sort of more eternal works of art or works of, of literature, works of pop culture. Yeah, like Veronica is so well-versed yeah. in art and film. And, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and I love, in, uh, so chapter two is the episode that's just aired, A Touch of Evil. Yes. Again, another nod to a classic uh, film. Uh, there's a great scene where they're all sitting at the, at the park bench, and you talk about uh, capturing a very specific style uh, in wardrobe in, in particular, you know, what Betty's wearing with the, the little collar, and, yes. and Veronica has the black and whites on it. Yeah, if you were, you know, blindfolded, thrown to a closet, and go, okay, when is this taking place? You're not exactly sure. Yeah. It's, Adds a, a really lovely charm to the whole universe. I, I agree. It's that, and that's a great word to describe it. Is it, it is it is charming, and it's interesting because, you know, when we were making the pilot and we were kind of putting it together and casting and designing it, uh, both me and the director very much we, we wanted that out of time, timeless, classic, universal, and and obviously all of our partners supported us you know because we that that's what we made right the, the, there were questions about about the 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 references and the and the and the feel of it but but what but we but everyone kind of rolled with it and we rolled the dice with it and and it, i feel like it's really become a signature of the show absolutely and i think part of why people respond to it is that it does have a different kind of feel from from other other shows, uh, other teen shows, and things like that. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, you you have it on. For, granted, we've all been looking at it now for <laughs> months and months. But if you watch it for five seconds, it's it's unlike anything else you're going to find on television. Right. It really yeah. is a very specific look. So, uh, how does 
Archie's Weird Fantasy fall into your life? Yeah. So Archie's Weird Fantasy, of course, is is uh, a kind of a legendary legendary chapter in Archie <laughs> uh, history and mythology. Uh, uh, there was a cartoon. Uh, I don't know if it was Saturday morning or it was after school, but it was called Archie's Weird Mystery. And it would be literally that. It would be Archie and his gang, much like Scooby-Doo mm-hmm. and, and the gang, would go around you know, solving mysteries. They weren't really mysteries. It was, I mean, there, there were some, some mysteries, but really it was just having weird uh, adventures. For instance, I remember vividly there was one episode where basically the, the gang is after um, these mutant plants, like, like these giant Venus flytraps, and it's sort of like a little bit like Archie meets Little Shop of Horrors. I love it. And, and, and <laughs> it was like, or, or like a giant robot, and... Right. and I believe there was a comic book series, sort of short-lived, that that um, was a tie-in to it, and and oftentimes the adventures would be predicated because um, Dilton Doily, the resident science nerd, would do some experiment that went wrong, right? Uh, okay. Went awry, <laughs> and and either someone you know someone was turned into a werewolf, right? Uh, uh, you know, weirdly. Um, the uh, Weird Mysteries was a sort of ancestor to Afterlife with Archie, which was the comic book series that I wrote uh, and still write, though somewhat sporadically, uh, <laughs> about putting Archie in the zombie apocalypse, right. which is kind of like an Archie meets the Evil Dead. Pretty, uh, There's some humor in it, some dark humor, yeah. some tongue-in-cheek, but it, it, it's a pretty hardcore horror book. And and I think the it, 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 it sort of is an answer to Archie's weird mystery. And and Afterlife with Archie, kind of what, what, what that demonstrated to me and to the folks at Archie, the editor-in-chief, uh, the publisher, John Goldwater, the, the, the owner of Archie, is that, wow, you could take these characters, and as long as you didn't betray what they were, as right. long as you honored what they were at their core, you could kind of throw them into any situation and and it would serve to illuminate the characters. It wouldn't betray the characters. Right. And and kind of when when it came time to develop Riverdale and write Riverdale and and, and produce Riverdale, um, we had sort of tested the waters with how far we could go with Afterlife, and 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 in a way, Riverdale is sort of like Afterlife minus the supernatural elements. Gotcha. The zombie elements, the 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 demon elements, the H.P. Lovecraft elements. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it is a darker take on these characters. It is, it is sub- a subversive take on the characters, uh, and it is a it is sort of a putting these characters in a very morally ambiguous and a morally compromised stew. Um, um, uh, uh, you know, again, which which has tested tested the characters, but but in its in its way, sort of Archie's word mystery is 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 an early iteration of all this you know it's and it kind of always goes back to um there's been a long uh long-standing tradition in archie comics uh to do archie meets uh, sure. comics like the like the most famous one a- and the more incongruous the better right and the course. kind of the mo- <laughs> most famous one is archie and marvel teamed up to do archie meets the punisher okay which which was you know one of the really it was it was a, a cross company crossover uh uh and it was mind-blowing that that one of the most hardcore violent characters in the marvel universe would be interacting with archie and his and his friends and and it that really captured my imagination that comic book uh it was like kind of a a mashup that you couldn't believe worked and 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 in a way uh that's what Riverdale is. It's a kind of a big mashup right. between Archie and sort of film noir, or Archie and and mystery and crime and 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 stuff. So so, it, it's part of a long-standing Archie tradition. Uh, uh, you know, I dream. I mean, I dream of one day doing Archie meets the the Punisher. Yeah, uh, like crossing over with with the uh, with the Marvel Netflix universe, or or. Uh, and this might be a little bit easier to pull off. Uh, <laughs> Archie meets Arrow, which I think would be amazing, and I think a lot easier to pull yes, off. Yes, exactly. <laughs> no, I think I think that definitely the kids could take a field trip to uh, 
to uh, Arrow's hometown. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, it's it's amazing. So after life with Archie it is uh, it becomes a big success. Yeah, for Archie Comics, and shortly thereafter, you become. Yeah, the the chief creative officer. Amazing. Yeah, it was it was it came out of a little bit. It came out of, you know, afterlife. Kind of none of us were prepared for, the way that 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 changed the conversation. And it, and the conversation, had, by the way, had been changed already with the introduction of Kevin Keller, right. a character that Dan Parent, a, a terrific Archie cartoonist, writer and artist, uh, had introduced under John Goldwater's watch. So 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 already. The envelope had been pushed a little bit. Got it. Uh, and and afterlife, again, could exist because of that. Um, the but the but the really big thing, and and at the time, you know, it 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 was the sort of less, it was much more behind the scenes. But but in addition to kind of working with John and and his editorial team about about comic book stuff, it was um, that I would help. John and and work with Archie in taking their properties and translating them to the screen, wow. which is something that DC obviously had done, mm -hmm. ha is doing, and Marvel had done, both to really terrific uh, uh, effect, and and it was sort of something that that had eluded Archie, you know there there was a a, a made for TV movie. The, which was you know Archie grown up and and going back for his twenty fifth uh, high school reunion uh, called um, to R Archie to Riverdale and back, which yep. was the Archie's grown up, which in fact was sort of a um, a, pi a backdoor pilot. It was a TV uh, movie okay. uh, that was set up to be a pilot, and if the TV movie had been successful, they would have made uh, a show called to Riverdale and back. Now. It wasn't successful for for various reasons, but but I think the big reason was because it it was a Archie as the grown ups, and and you can change a lot of stuff about Archie, and do a lot of things with Archie, but but weirdly the one thing you kind of can't do, is have them be adults. Right now now hopefully Riverdale's going to have a long life and we're going to grow up with Archie, uh uh but 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 I think that that that's that was sort of a uh uh. Uh, uh, a trial run that didn't work. And there had been a couple of live action pilots that had been filmed that either were, that never aired, that they never got to series. There was sure. one in the, a black and white one in the 60s that's, that's quite, it's pretty easy to find on YouTube. Okay. It's, it's really earnest. It's very much like, um, it's like a 1960s uh, family comedy. Gidget. Gidget, kind of Gidget, yeah. or, or Dobie Gil Gillis, Dobie Gillis, or, yeah. or uh, Andy Rooney. Sure. Um, um, uh, uh, you can find it, and it's not without charm. It has some <laughs> charm. Uh, and then there was a late 70s, weird, psychedelic Archie. Uh, 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 it was called the Archie Variety Show, or something. <laughs> And it was like weird musical numbers and weird sketches. It was almost like Saturday Night Live sketches. Okay. And, and it's sort of um, infamous, kind of like the <laughs> like the the TV movie. And and you know, I have a dim memory of seeing it, but but I I I I don't know how to. <laughs> I can't corroborate it. No one seems to remember it. I mean, it, it's out there, and and there are, you know, recently clips have. Um, surfaced online at, but I even went to the muse the museum of uh, movies and television, television yeah. to try to find it and I, I and I couldn't find it Amazing. and then strangely a guy in my bu the building I lived in uh, in LA you know kind of when he heard I was doing this he sort of stopped me in the hall one day and he said you know my father produced the pilot back in the 70s and I was like wow oh my god you're the first person who <laughs> Who knows about this? So, so it's it's it's, but but it was it was some it was the final front. It, it, it hadn't happened though. Right. Th there had been also the Josie and the Pussycats movie. Right. Right. Which was sort of um, like late nineties. Yeah, and yeah. kind of a, another sort of notorious flop. But but, you know that too, wasn't as big a miss. I don't think as people, painted out. But 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 it hadn't it had it it we hadn't you know. A pilot hadn't gone to series. A, a, a movie hadn't been launched. Right. So, so that was sort of my other big duty as chief creative officer is 
uh, it was to be on the ground here in LA right. and to spread the gospel of Archie and to try and uh, uh, develop some properties in television and film. And, and uh, 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 you know, the first thing that the first thing we did was try to do Archie as a movie. Okay. And sorry, I'm just simpi- sipping some high. That's hot all right. Tea. Um, and I had partnered with some producers, and the idea had been to do a John Hughes coming of age kind of movie. Okay. Uh, the movie that that had come out at the time that I loved is one of my favorite um, coming of age movies, and just kind of one of my favorite movies was uh, Perks of Being a Wallflower. Oh, yeah, of course. And and I was friends with the director, Jason Moore, who had done uh, Pitch Perfect. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and I'd always, always wanted to do something with Jason. I kind of knew him back from the old New York theater days. He's obviously a hugely successful theater director. And, yeah. and, and, and we kind of wanted to partner on something and we'd both seen Perks, and and I said, you know, imagine, Jason, if we could do that with the Archie characters. Tell, like, the ultimate coming-of-age movie. And and uh, Jason liked that idea, and we put together a, a pitch, which we kind of took around town, and uh, pitched to all the big studios. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, everyone, you know, looking back on it now with a little bit more clarity... Um, Everyone really loved the pitch, and and everyone wanted to be in business with Jason. He had just done a hit, hit movie, and and sure. and and I had I'd written uh, an adaptation of Carrie that people really responded to. Absolutely, yeah. So so people liked it, and 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 people liked Archie. They loved Archie, but and 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 many said, you know, I grew up reading Archie, but it was hard to sell. Hmm. In fact. We only sold it to Warner Brothers, and and a lot of the studios and executives had different reasons. But 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 a lo- but basically, it came down to we just don't make these kinds of movies. You know, Summit right. makes these kinds of movies, or or Lionsgate, or or more independent studios. But we've gone to Sony and Universal and Warner Brothers, and. The one studio that bought it was Warner Brothers, and an executive who bought it. There was an executive who bought it, and her name was Sarah Schechter, and she loved teen movies, and she she loved Archie. She knew Archie, and she loved me, and she loved Jason, and she bought it, and and uh, that was great. We were happy, <laughs> and I was like, "Thank God, you know, we'll get to write it. I'll get to write it, and and this will be great." And then. It took a while to figure out everyone's deal. Right. It was a really complicated business deal because there was Jason's deal to figure out. There was my deal to figure out. I, I think I was the easiest one to figure out <laughs> since I basically was going to do it. I wanted to do it for free. Sure. But they had to figure out the rights with, with John Goldwater and Archie. Then the, there were two producers, really good producers, Dan Lin and, and Roy Lee. Uh, uh, so it took, a wh- it took like three months, let's say. Yeah. And just as I was getting ready to start writing, Jason and I were summoned in to meet with with uh, uh, a, an executive at at Warner Brothers, who was above Sarah Schechter, kind mm-hmm. of Sarah's boss, and he wanted to have a kickoff meeting, and he really wanted to be in uh, in on the ground floor of this, and he wanted to meet Jason because because. Um, uh, he was a huge fan of Pitch Perfect, <laughs> and Sarah said, "So come in, and it's going to be a kickoff meeting." Yeah, and I, I said, "Now it's not going to be a pitch meeting because like you guys bought the pitch." And Sarah said, "No, no, no, it's not a pitch meeting; it's a kickoff meeting." So I was like, "Okay," and Jason and I kind of like talked about it the night before, and they're like, "You know what? Let's just let's just be ready to pitch it in case we have to pitch it again." So, right. so we have this meeting, and the executive says, um, "So guys." What's the pitch? And I and and Jason and I were like, here we well, go, here we go. <laughs> but we had the pitch ready. We started the pitch, and maybe two minutes, and he's like, let, let me stop you. Let me stop you right there. Sounds like what you're talking about is a coming of age movie. And I was like, yeah, and he, and that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. And 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 he's like, well, what's the what's the high concept? What's 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 the what's the take? And I said, well, no, that that it's it's the take is Archie, but John Hughes. 
Archie, but real. Archie with real emotion and, and real uh, uh, Struggle. complexity and, 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 yeah. and all that stuff. And, and, and the, um, the executive was like, yeah, you know, only problem is we don't make those movies at Warner Brothers. And, and he was right. They don't. They don't. Like, like historically, they don't. And he was like, no, no, you got to come up with some takes. Like, like, and then, you know, very famously, um, uh, he started pitching different takes. <laughs> like, like uh, Archie is traveling through time. Okay. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and, and, or that there were portals all around Riverdale and there were portals to other, other dimensions. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> kind of not a portal show. Getting farther away from got, what you guys got, wanted. Getting farther away. Um, um, you know, it, uh, imagine Archie, but he's played by Louis C.K. And I was like, okay. Uh, uh, and then, and there was one pitch that I kind of liked and, and it is, isn't as different from Riverdale, but he, he also pitched like, or, you know, Archie and Reggie and Jugged, they go to spring, they, they go to Florida for spring break and they meet the girls from spring breakers. And I, and I'd seen and loved spring breakers. And I was like, yeah, I kind of like that one. Uh, 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 and, and then he said, and this, this kind of, you know, was sort of like, uh, okay, this is kind of the most surreal meeting. And he's like, or listen. You guys may not know this, but the Archie comic books, they're doing a comic book where Archie meets zombies. It's like, that's a movie. That's a, that's a movie we can, we can make, we can market. Like, you guys got to read this. He and had I'm no like, idea. He had no idea. And I was like, <laughs> no, 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 I, I, I write that comic book. And, 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 and basically, and then he said, well, basically, you hear what I'm saying. Like, yeah. um, uh, we need a higher concept. And Jason and I spent about a month... Um, trying to develop a concept and and we sort of there is a there there and there was one to be had mm -hmm. uh and it was more like that it, that included some some higher concept el elements it, maybe you'll understand what i say like sure. imagine um archie as back to the future like you can see that like yeah. time travel 50s right. americana small town uh, uh, I was, you know, so so we worked on it, but but it 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 did go far from what we had set out to do, which was sort of more a more intimate, emotional coming of age story. So the deal yeah. kind of fell apart. Well, and you don't want to find yourself so far down the road because you want to get this movie made, and then look back and go, well, that's not what we set out to do at all. Yeah, or I mean, and that's kind of in the best scenario. The the the, the more likely thing is. You spend years and years developing it, and it never gets made. Sure, and 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 these characters are tied up sort of forever, right. kind of in in eternity. So so the deal fell apart, and we all kind of regrouped and went our separate ways. And you know, I, I said to John Goldwater, we had a really hard conversation because because he really wanted this to happen, and I really wanted hmm. this to happen. And John had been to every single meeting except this kickoff meeting. So, so John's back in New York. I call him and I say, you're not going to believe what happened. And I told him about the meeting. And he's like, he almost didn't believe it. <laughs> and, and he's like, it sounds like an episode of Entourage. And I was like, it was like an yeah. episode of Entourage. And, and, I, and I kind of said, you, you know, you had to be there. Yeah. And I, I kind of said, you know, you have to trust me. I don't think this is the right thing to do. And, and John took a leap of faith and, and, uh, uh, said okay you know i trust you let's not let's not do this and and at the end of the conversation i kind of had to say say you know john we just we just took this out we, we had thought let's take it to the smaller studios lionsgate summit but but you know you kind of have to let things cool a little bit mm -hmm. or else it seems like you're reactive it seems like you're desperate it seems like um, you don't have a clear vision. So I kind of said to John, I was like, you know, John, we have to kind of just let this sit for a little while and sure. focus on, on other things. And, and that was hard for him, for him and for me. Yeah. We, we, we'd both spent, let's say a year kind of working on this movie thing. And then some time passed. And then I read on deadline that Sarah Schechter had gone, who had bought the pitch in the room, had gone to work, and to be the head of Greg Berlanti's development team, uh, and his, uh, um, and I, and I, and I sort of had a light bulb moment, and and 
you know, there are many versions of the story. And one, one version of the story is Sarah called me. <laughs> and, and in one version of the story, I called Sarah. But, we, but let's say we got in touch pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and, and she was a huge fan of the property and the project and stuff. And it made so much sense to partner with Greg right. on this because, of course, Greg, first of all, he was, he was the, you know, the reigning um, king of comic book stuff on TV Doubt, yep. uh, and at the CW. And he'd also cut his teeth on coming-of-age shows like, uh, like Dawson's. Dawson's was his first kind of big TV credit. And then Everwood after that. And th which was a small town show. Yeah. So it felt like, wait a minute, here's a producer who knows comic books. He knows coming-of-age. And he knows small town shows, and and uh, he's the guy. Yeah. And um, I I can't remember then after either I either met with Greg and Sarah and Greg loved and we talked about a couple of other ideas, but he loved the idea of doing Archie, and and doing a show called Riverdale. So it was about a small town, and then I uh, I had a meeting over at Warner Brothers with the executives there, Susan Rovner, who's the, the, the head of their development. And, and John, at the time we were, we were kind of torn between doing a, a low budget movie at Lionsgate or, or trying to do this as a TV show. And, and the TV show was gonna be more work because we had the movie pitch already done. Right. But as I was sitting um, in the lobby of the one, the building 140 on the Warner Brothers lot, which is the TV building, yep. waiting to go into the meeting, I was sitting in a chair in the lobby, and across the way from me, there was a poster for Everwood. And it was a cast f poster. It was the entire cast sort of posed in front of a, of a fence with, like, a farmhouse behind them and the mountains behind them and the blue sky behind the mountains. Yeah. And I had a vision of a poster for Riverdale that was all of our cast gathered in front of Pops and the diner in Archie. And I, yeah. and I took a picture of the, of the poster and I texted it to John and I said, John, this is gonna happen for Riverdale. We have to do this TV thing. Nice. And, and I kind of went into the s meeting with Susan at Rovner and literally, I d this is the first time I was meeting her and before I'd even sat down, she said, I, I'm obsessed with Archie. <laughs> I love Archie. Uh, we're doing this. Greg's absolutely the perfect uh, partner and producer for this. Right. Um, uh, it's going to be the ultimate high school show. We're going to do it at the CW. It's going to be a huge hit. And, and, then, <laughs> and, then, and then she was like, but, but sit down and we should talk. Yeah. And, and we talked. And, and I talked about how passionate I was about these characters and how I felt like Archie... The, the story of Archie was 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 sort of one of the could be a great American epic that said everything about small towns and families and and it was like our town our town was was and is one of my favorite plays it's one of my favorite written works of art totally it's a it's a piece I revisit every year I reread it or I see a production of it mm -hmm. and it 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 is about everything it is about childhood it is about marriage it is about small town life it is about death yeah it's 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 it, it is an Ameri it is a very small very giant american epic and and i always saw archie and betty as george and emily i always and wow. and and i talked about that and she was like yeah this is yeah we're doing this and and I said great, and and John got on board, and I had a, and I said, well, this is great, you know, I'm gonna uh, we're gonna do this with Greg, and Greg knows and he understands what we want to do, and it's not gonna be time travel and portals and stuff, and and I had my first meeting with Greg, uh, not I had met with him about doing Archie, but this was right. our first real, like let's roll up our sleeves, let let's do this, and 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 Greg said, what's this about? And I started telling, well, it's about this girl, and she comes here, and and like then she wants to be a cheerleader, and Archie wants to just do music, and he's like, no, 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 what's the show about? And and he's like, like what's its theme? What what is it about? And and he said, don't 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 tell me the plot, tell me what it's about, Roberto. And I started talking, and he said, yep, I think this is great. I think these are this is all really good. 
And he says, I think you're going to want a, a high concept on this to sell it. And I sort of like, like immediately gri- gripped oh, my chair no. and I was like, oh my God, here we go. Here we go again. And, and, and he said, and, and he said, and I, I swear to God, he said, I think you're going to want a dead body. And at first I thought he was kidding. And then he was like, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding. I think you're going to want a, a dead body. And I was like, Amazing. okay. So I, I, he's like, think about it. Just yeah. think about it. And I thought about it and, you know, w- uh, uh, and and but and he said, but Greg Greg said, you know, that's my opinion, that's my advice, but but, you know, obviously we will support you in your vision, and we developed a pitch, which was, uh, again, it was a coming of age show, like John Hughes, yeah. and and the TV shows that we were invoking, were My So Called Life, right, and Freaks and Geeks, which are two of my favorite high school Absolutely. coming of age shows, and shows people love yeah and and we took this out um to all the 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 studio that we, we went out with warner brothers and we took it to all the networks and it was a little bit of deja vu uh uh everyone loved it everyone liked it everyone responded to it everyone loved greg everyone ro- like uh 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 loved me loved the the property loved the ip but we heard back like it's like you know it's hard to do coming of age shows, mm-hmm. you know, freaks and geeks in my so-called lives life. There, there were, they were critical favorites and, and they, they were cult favorites and they right. had passionate fans, but they, they only lasted a year. Right. And, and the way that TV works now is you kind of need to be make, you know, the show you're describing is quiet and thoughtful and emotional, but it's not very loud. And you do need something that will cut through that. And, and, one network bought it, and the network was Fox. Hmm. And, and I said, wow, this is great. Fox gets it. And, and, and I'd worked on Glee for three years, so they, they knew me a little bit at Fox. And uh, I thought, okay, well, great. I'm going to write my heart out, pour it into this, this pilot. And before I started writing, uh, the Fox executive said, hey, can we have a phone call? We want to have a kickoff phone call. And I was like, oh, my God, here we go, another kickoff meeting. And so, so we had the phone call, and the executives at Fox, um, the development executives, said basically, like, listen, we love this. We love you. We love uh, everything about this. But you have to make it your own, Roberto. Like, like, you've got such a specific voice. You've got such specific interests and passion. This, you need to put your stamp more on this. Okay. And, 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 and you need to make it a little noisier and you need to, to have it stand apart a little bit. Um, Did they feel it was too similar to, to a Freaks and Geeks or no, something? No, no, like? it wasn't even that. It was just sort of like, like, what's the hook? Right. And, and, and like, you can't, you have to make a compelling show yeah. that, that isn't dependent on it just being the Archie characters. So, um, um, I was like, okay, here we go again. And, and I thought about it long and hard. And, and I went back to Greg and I said, Greg, you were right. Damn it. I need a dead body. Right. And, 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 and Greg started laughing and he was like, I told you. And I was like, I know, I know. And it's sort of like, I was like, in the back of my, my mind, I was like, okay, when Greg Berlanti tells you something, <laughs> listen, write it down, write it down and listen. <laughs> and, and, um, uh, you know, sometimes when you put a high concept on something, the concept rejects it. It just doesn't want to be that. Sure. It just it just doesn't want to want to be that. But when the concept of adding a body or a murder mystery element when when it when this when I applied that concept to the show that I'd been working on, the show that I pitched, the show that I'd been developing, it immediately clicked in and it immediately deepened everything. Yeah. And and within 20 minutes, I had seen how the story shifted around this idea that one of the kids, one of the one of the Riverdale High kids had died mysteriously over the summer. And and it it, it and of course it 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 sort of, you know, the template sort of became like, well, 
you know, imagine, you know, Twin Peaks started, of course, with the death of the high school homecoming queen. Right. So it's like, okay, well, there, and I love that show. So it's mm -hmm. like, okay, I, and Twin Peaks is a little bit out of time as well. Absolutely. So it's sort of like, okay, well, imagine Twin Peaks, but instead of following the FBI agent, you're following the high school kids mm -hmm. and they're responding emotionally to one of their classmates dying under under mysterious circumstances. And I was like, well, I love that because I love mystery. Uh, I do have a ghoulish, <laughs> uh, I love horror, I love the macabre, and I yeah. love the creepy stuff. Uh, so I was like, okay, well, actually, this maybe this is how I put my stamp on this. And, and you know, I started thinking about other kind of coming-of-age movies and stories. And, and when I really thought about, as much as I love the John Hughes movies, my favorite coming-of-age movies uh, were like Perks, which was a little bit darker. Yeah. But it was also um, Stand By Me. Oh, which fantastic. Was, which was sort of like, um, which Stephen King wrote. He was yeah. my, my favorite writer. One of my favorite writers, maybe my favorite writer. And, and it was about four kids who go to see a dead body. And another movie that I, I watched really young, but it made a huge impression on me and, and scared me. I, it, it, it scared me and upset me when I watched it. it was the river was River's Edge. Oh, yeah, with, yeah, yeah. With Keanu Reeves, which is, of course, a movie about a group of high school kids who know that one of their friends, uh, her dead body, her naked dead body is by the River's Edge. Sure. And they know one of their friends uh, uh, killed her. And it's sort of like they're, and the movie is them wrestling with whether or not they should tell the authorities. Right. That's kind of the movie. And it, 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 I'd never seen a movie. It was an indie movie, and and I'd never really seen an indie movie like that. Kind of watched it on on video, and it was sort of like, uh, it felt transgressive, and yeah. and it felt like well, well, maybe then Riverdale really isn't just a coming of age show. It is a coming of age show, but but. But more, it's more a loss of innocence shows. That's right. Show, and and I understood that, and I knew suddenly why Cheryl didn't like P Betty, and it was because her sister Betty had dated her brother Jason, who died. Right. And there was some mystery around that, and and I understood Archie's crisis of having to choose between music or football, uh, in the context of. This is a kid who doesn't want to die suddenly like Jason Blossom Absolutely. and not have made his mark on the world. And 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 everything just deepened yeah. and got more complex and 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 darker. And there was a and there was some dark beating heart to it. And 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 kind of worked on that. And and Fox said, Oh my God, we love this script. Yeah. And I thought, oh my God, great! Fox is going to make this pilot, right? And 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 everyone really rallied behind the script, and everyone really loved the the concept. Greg, Sarah, Susan Rovner, uh, Peter Roth, uh, 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 who's really the god, really the go one of the godfathers of this. Everyone loved it, and we were heartbroken and devastated. I was devastated when Fox didn't make the pilot. And and um, I thought, oh my God, we got it. That we figured it out. This is the show. Yeah. And Susan Rovner, and Greg, and Sarah, and Peter Roth, all said when when Fox passed, called me. All of them were on the phone, and they said, and and with the same surety that Susan had said to me when I walked into her office, we're going to do this. Yeah. She said, we're 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 gonna we're gonna get this back from Fox. And we're going to make this pilot. This pilot is it's too good. And and I thought, oh well, that's what they say to everyone. And and I had pi I had had pilots die before. Sure. And and they were it was upsetting. Yeah. And I thought, well, this is all talk. And that that pilot died in January, and in February we were repitching the show, and and we went to. Different places. Uh, 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 we took it to MTV, ABC Family at the time, mm -hmm. now Freeform, and we uh, and Netflix, right? And and uh, uh, Amazon, 
and, and we went back to the CW. And I say we went back to the CW because we'd originally pitched it to the CW. And the CW, uh, the first round, uh, and, and, and they were going to buy it um, uh, partly because they trusted Greg and valued Greg. Totally. But, but the CW had quite candidly said, it doesn't feel high concepty enough for us. Kind of the stuff we're doing is really genre. And, and, and coming of age isn't enough of a genre. Right. So we, when we went back and we repitched the darker, more mysterious, kind of, kind of suburban noir yeah. version of Archie, CW th- was like, wow, wow wh- why didn't you tell us this was the show in, that's the, in the first place? And, yeah. and, 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 you know, and, and I said, you know, it wasn't. And that, that's on me. You know, it, it, it changed over the last six months. And they read it. And loved it, and and really said, you know, we're going to have to go through a development cycle with you on this, but we really love this, mm-hmm. and 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 it was sort of like a, a le- they were making a leap of faith, um, um, uh, but Tom Sherman, kind of the head of development there, and and Mark Pedowitz really, you know, again believed in Greg's and read the script and liked the script, so we went through another development cycle with the CW. And in that one, it wasn't about figuring out what the show was. It was about, you know, kind of crystallizing the ideas that were there, developing some of them further. I think in in the development process with the CW, if I if I think of if I can think of, and 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 a lot of stuff, everything got richer, deeper, but the the really big thing that that changed was the adults in the pilot, and and they were always there, right. But but the CW really wanted to do a show that was about a town. It wasn't just a high school show. So I would say that the biggest thing that happened between the Fox development and the CW development um, was that the parents' relationships deepened. Okay. Both both the the relationships with their kids right. and with each other. And and you know specifically, I think Archie's relationship with Fred and his friendship with Fred, I mean friendship, and, and his his story with Fred deepened. Um, uh, and I thought it was good, mm-hmm. and really good. I was really proud of it. And, you know, about a year ago, a year ago today, uh, or like four days ago or three days ago, uh, we got a call that that uh, we were going to, the, the CW, uh, had picked up Riverdale to pilot and, and Warner, but Bo- Warner Bros. was going to produce this pilot. Uh, uh, so it's been a real journey. Dr- even so it's about, so a year ago, uh, we did that and kind of a year later we were premiering. So it's been a very, very long winding, yeah. uh, journey, but, but in a way that you can't, you don't know it at the time. It's the right journey. It's, yep. it's the right network. It's the right. We found the right director, Lee Tolenkrieger, who's who's a genius, and and really put the right stamp on the show. We found the right cast. I love this cast. I don't Amazing. know if we would have found this cast a year earlier. Just how it works. Yeah. It's 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 for a TV show to come together. It's so many elements. Right. And you can have an amazing script, but you don't get the right director, and and that's it. Or or you get the right director, but it's on the wrong network, right. and 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 so many different things kind of fell into place. That that you know, though it was a grueling journey, and and there were a lot of um, dark nights of the dark nights of the soul. <laughs> it's it it felt exactly right, and it, and you know, weirdly, it was exactly as Susan said. Amazing. And 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 it was where Greg you know had a home he had a home he had his ho- one of his his home was at Warner Brothers and 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 uh CW and and you know uh and it's been a great partnership you know the yeah the fr- from there absolutely yeah I had the pleasure I was actually working in the bungalow for Mr. Berlanti about a year ago this yeah. time and uh one of the producers over there Carlo Gawa handed me the Riverdale script because I want you to read this and then we're going to talk about it and that's yeah. what he would do with me and the thing that stuck out to me, uh, one, I, I grew up with Archie and the gang, so I knew all these kids. But I come from musical theater. Yeah. And this script, and I didn't know your background at the time. This was a totally cold read. 
and there is so much music in this pilot mm. script. And I, I, and we get the pleasure as we as we go now into chapter two. Um, the music exists so throughout. I yeah. mean, there, this is a flavor of show that I have never seen on television before, and I didn't realize how much I wanted to see it. Right, so right, right. it's really exciting stuff. So as we get into chapter two, so if you haven't uh, yet watched chapter two, stop the podcast, go watch it if you're abroad on Netflix or uh, on uh, on your DVR here in the States. Um, let's talk about Jason's corpse. It's horrific. Yeah, yeah, no, you know, it's so funny. One of my favorite um, movies of all time is this great horror movie called Creep Show. Sure. Uh, Stephen King, right? Stephen King. Yeah. Stephen King. And it, it, was, it was sort of like short horror stories, kind of like based on ho- a horror comic book. Yep. And, and, and it's scary. It's also funny, tongue in cheek. It's also got really lurid, uh, uh, kind of cheesy, but in my opinion, amazing and great special effects. And and when when it came time to, to kind of create Jason's corpse, I was like, <laughs> watch Creep Show. I want it to be like like out of a fifties horror comic. Yeah. And that's kind of what it is. It's like and it's shot like a, like Creep Show, uh, like Lee, Lee, you know, obviously Lee's Lee's an amazing director, but he really got Y- you know, you could feel it, and it and it felt like something out of Creep Show, which oh I love. Oh my loved. gosh! When we would see the da- the dailies of it, we were just watching take after take, and all of us in the office are looking at this, going, "They can't put th- this is awful to look at. They yeah. can't put this on TV." But it looks amazing, and it is horrific in all the right ways. So shortly thereafter, we have uh, we have Archie. Uh, running down the street naked and sweaty. Right, right. Well, he's got he's got his gym shorts on. He does have his gym shorts uh, on. Uh, but but yeah, listen, it's 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 the show um, has a ripeness to it. Yeah, and 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 again, it's it's playing with those film noir conventions. Uh, so so the idea of Archie jogging late at night, right? The the lonely empty streets of Riverdale, uh, 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 tormented. Sweaty and tormented, it's like body heat. <laughs> totally, almost. absolutely. Uh, 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 but that that you know that's that's the style of the show. You know, it also happens that we have a really strapping young uh, actor, KJ Apa, who plays Archie, who's really athletic and 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 uh, up for it. No, and and did he have any idea that he would be uh, as exposed? No, he well, he'd read the pilot script. <laughs> Uh, but but you know and we gosh we've never really talked about it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, listen, I think he he knew that Archie was a football player. He knew right. that Archie, you know, uh, uh, part of his big story was football. So so I think he always knew that there'd be a physicality and 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 that element to it. You know, it, I don't know that anyone knew how um, you know sexual it it was going to be. Right. Um, 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 so so yeah, I mean I don't know, but listen, he's always up. He's up for it. He's, he's that's a great. real trooper. And now and talk about the the casting here. So not only uh, KJ Apa who plays Archie, it was a worldwide search. Yeah, yeah. For we spent six months casting these kids or trying to cast these kids, and and David Rapoport, who uh, is such a great casting director and has done a lot of shows with Greg. Uh, I mean, he looked all, all over the world. We brought in Archies from England. We brought in Archie's from uh, Australia. Right. Uh, we brought in Archie's from you know two doors down, and <laughs> and 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 KJ came very in very late to the process, wow. and and you know I, I was dubious because he first of all he was from New Zealand, and uh, and and I I I I had always in my head thought even when we were auditioning Archie's from England and stuff, I was like, no, Archie kind of she should he should be from. A suburban small town in 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 the states, and then um, I asked, "Does he have red hair?" And David said, "No, he's got dark hair." And I was like, "Uh oh, two strikes against him." We we went to the other side of the world to find someone without red yeah, hair. <laughs> and 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 um, he came in, and he was Archie, and yeah. he he was the perfect combination of earnest with edge, uh, innocence with a little bit of a uh, uh, of danger to him as well. Mm-hmm. And and uh, and he was he was the answer. I mean, I don't know how else to say it. It's 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 it's. I don't know what. I don't think we would have made the pilot if KJ hadn't walked in when he did. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, and I think that about all of the cast really. 
Uh, but but I remember at a certain point we kind of had all the kids, and except for Archie, and uh, uh, and you know that's not true. Kevin was the last kid we we cast off a of tape. But 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 in terms of the 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 top four or five, uh, you know, Art KJ was the last. Right, and he is amazing. All of these kids deal with such. Um, inner turmoil and struggle among themselves. And then like uh, Archie's storyline, it's very much at this point in the story, it's very much, you know, football versus music yeah. and a little romance. Uh, so a guy who could very easily be forgotten character wise, Archie is kind of the plain Jane of the group, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, he's given so much and yeah. KJ gives so much. You absolutely engage. Yeah. Yeah, that he's the center of of the show, and 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 he he. You know he 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 has a huge burden, and and it's weird. You you know you can do, a lot of things with a lot of the characters. That, like you can go really deep and psychological, and dark, uh, with Jughead, right? With with Betty and Veronica, uh, uh. Archie's tricky. He's not. He's not an anti-hero. Like he's not like Tony Soprano. He's not like Don <laughs> Draper. He's not like. So so it's it's a trickier uh, act to pull off, which KJ does beautifully. And and by the way, he's a great uh, musician. He's a great guitar player. He's a yeah. great singer. So he and he's athletic. So he is in many ways. He is Archie. He's he's good at all the outdoor stuff, the sports stuff, and he's also got the soul of a musician. Absolutely. Um, so, uh, then the big thing, one of the, one of the bigger moments in, in episode chapter two is unlike the pilot where we see just bits and pieces of Jughead, yeah. we get a lot of Jughead. We do. And I know, uh, my, I just had the pleasure of watching last Friday after yeah. it aired on the DVR. I sat down with my nine-year-old son, who's, uh, thanks to you, been reading the Archie comic books. Good. And he's like, Dad, can I watch this show? And I talked to my wife, and she's like, yeah, yeah, we can all watch it. If there's any questions, we can talk about right. it. Um, and so uh, he loved it, but of course he comes to me and goes, Dad, where's Jughead? I'm like, he actually went the first moment uh, you see Jughead sitting in the crowd with yeah. the hat. Yeah. He knew it immediately. Like, yeah. It's Jughead. Yeah. But he says to me at the end, it's like, Dad, is, is Jughead going to be in it more? I'm like, yeah, you'll see more. You'll yeah, see it's, more. Yeah, it's funny. You know, pilots, um, there's only so much you can do in a pilot. And, uh, you know, there's a danger to overstuff the pilots. Totally. I think our, our our pilot is really stuffed. But it, it but it, so it, 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 it may, made sense to hold back a little bit right. uh, uh, one of the characters. And, and he did feel like, it 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 felt art like an artistic choice as well because he um he's sort of outside the action he's a bit of an outsider he and Archie are a little bit estranged so it made sense that if you're gonna pull back hold back on a character it was Jughead right you know uh, everyone who was live tweeting and and I was reading all the tweets and all the stuff <laughs> they were like great pilot but that we need more Jughead sure and I will uh, confess that Greg. When we were working on episode two, and I pitched him what I thought to do, uh, what what the stories were, he's like, "It's got to be an Archie Jughead story." And it and it, and 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 I was like, "Well, no, they're strange." He goes, "You got to get them into a story together," and he was a hundred percent right. Yeah. And 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 I think a lot the way that sort of Betty and Veronica that epic friendship is launched in the pilot. Yeah. I think the Archie Jughead friendship is really launched in episode two. It is, and, and it's interesting. Both of these, um, both of these uh, two couples, uh, Betty and Veronica, and Archie and Jughead, who have these famous friendships. Yeah. When we introduce them in in the pilot, and then even at the top of chapter two, they're sort of at odds with each other. Yeah. And um, but uh, the payoff is so great. It, one of the things that um, has been outstanding coming from uh, critics and and uh, friends alike is how much they love the fact that there isn't the uh, you know women fighting women. Yeah, right. Uh, that there's a little bit of girl power uh, it, happening. Uh, in the show, and that these women, even though they're going to run into obstacles, they are also uh, going to support each other, and they're going to go the extra mile, and we see that. Yeah, you know, it's it's it's. I, I didn't consciously set out to do that. I mean, I think people, you know, I think, I don't think anyone was, you know, 
hoping that there would be a lot of bitchy backstabbery right. and stuff like that. And, and it, 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 I, I, it never even, I didn't consciously think, okay, well don't do that Roberto. In fact, we've got a great mean girl who has great one liners, oh my Cheryl gosh. Blossom, but, but it did feel like the deeper story was one about friendship mm -hmm. for the girls and the guys. And, 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 you know, Jughead and Archie kind of, I feel like are almost like it's a brother relationship. And, yeah. and, that uh, that's just appeal. That was just appealing, uh, and a little. It just was a little bit deeper, uh, uh, and people are really responding to it. I think. It, I think people love the same way that I wanted to be friends with these characters. I think people love seeing these characters be friends, and 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 that's sort of the still the aspirational uh, 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 aspect of the show. Absolutely, and and uh, yeah, Cheryl Blossom here is Madeline Patch is amazing amazing yeah she's the best the when the world when the rest of the world discovers her yeah no she's i know like the her two second looks are spectacular yeah no she's 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 really great and and it's funny she obviously has a lot of the comedy and and some archness and some some campiness but what's amazing about her is as an actress is she can go deep oh so deep in a split second yeah. it's it's that that switching on and off is is it's it's really terrific and and there's an unpredictability to her that that I think is perfect for the character and and kind of the show and very human. I mean, at the end of this episode, she has a real uh, a real moment of vulnerability breakdown and, and in the locker yeah, room for sure for sure. And the fact that I mean, it's such a well done scene. She breaks down. Veronica is there to support her. And Betty sort of falls for the fact that this is who Veronica yeah. is. Yep, yep. I, I pegged this girl all wrong. Yep. Um, so well done. Uh, amazing you. performances. And I know you have to run. Um, two things we got to hit on here. Production number at the end. Yeah. This Sugar Sugar. It's First amazing. off, I was a fan. I said to you almost a year ago when we met, you got to figure out a way to get Sugar Sugar <laughs> into the script. And I know I wasn't the only one. Yeah. That is a classic Archie gang from the 60s right. uh, song. And this, you know, when they do it in the stage, on the stage uh, at the pep rally, it's spectacular. Yeah. Josie nails it. Yeah. You got the marching band going. Uh, and now we're also shooting in Vancouver. Right. Torrential downpour. I know. You know, it's so funny. Like, um, I wasn't there the night of the pep rally. And I... Uh, so I, but but Ryan Lindenberg, uh, who worked on the show, and two writers were up there, and all this stuff, and they would text me every fifteen minutes, downpour. Yeah. It's and I was like, well, are you? What are we doing with the pepper? And they're like, they're just going to shoot it in the rain, and I was so I was a st stressed, yeah, and b I was heartbroken that I wasn't up there being supportive. I really wa was, and you know, the dailies came in, come, came in and like Warner Bros. was like, that's such a shame about the rain. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And, but Lee kept saying, no, I think it's going to work. I yeah. think it's going to work. And, and it is spectacular and it is raining, but somehow it makes it better. I, I don't, I don't even, it, it, it's, it's one of those things like it's, it feels real. It's yeah. again, a little more unpredictable and it, it, it does under cut the brightness of a traditional pet rally totally it adds to the excitement i mean it's i you know the first thing i thought of was uh prince's amazing purple rain super yeah. uh super bowl thing torrential downpour yeah, totally. there's there's this outdoor concert thing where weather is inevitable and the fact that you also end that scene with then uh cheryl having yeah, the flashback yeah. and the breakdown it works seamlessly oh good yeah no listen proud of that uh so well done. This is a great, great chapter two. Uh, we've got two questions from our Twitter gang. Okay. Okay. On Twitter, we have uh, Christina at Meek the Geek on Twitter. Uh, she wanted to ask, how did playwriting lead to TV writing? Uh, playwright, uh, uh, you know, the, it, the, for a while, um, if you were, there was, there, it felt like there was kind of this push from the TV world to, to, a place to find writers uh, uh, with good, with voices. Uh, kept to go to New York and go to playwrights, young yeah. playwrights. Um, uh, 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 that that so that sort of phenomenon happened kind of when I was a, a, a playwright in New York doing shows off Broadway. 
I mean, it specifically happened is because the guys who, my first TV job was on Big Love, uh, the HBO show, and the two creators of that show had been, come from the New York theater scene themselves. Sure. So they, they really valued, uh, they, they liked hiring playwrights. Uh, uh, they just liked, they liked the point of view and they liked that stuff. And, and either they read or saw one of my plays and, and, uh, you know, basically my agent said, do you, do you want to, do you want to go in for this job? And, and so it was, it was specifically that I was a playwright and that they themselves had been playwrights. Um, um, but for, but like I said, for a while, maybe for like six or seven years, uh, it was a good way, a different way to break into TV other than the traditional be a writer's room assistant and, and, or write a spec and all that stuff. It was, if you were a produced playwright, there was an assumption that you could, you could write. Yeah. Uh, so it was that's that's so I benefited greatly from that even though I'd never been in a writer's room and 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 you know there's no way to prepare for that until you're in it that's true and it's a very I mean it is a very different world you're writing for uh, writing plays it's a, you're it's a one man show yeah. television just the hugely, necessary beast it's, yeah, it's collaborative, collaborative effort. exactly uh, so did you always want to did you always have television on the no not no. really no I thought I thought. I thought I would be a, a working New York playwright, probably that I would teach playwriting like at at at, at some Ivy League college, <laughs> and, and and then I was writing comic books, and 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 I was like, okay, well, good. This is this is good. This is a good life. Yeah, I'll write plays. They're my passion, but I'll I'll support myself teaching and and doing comic books. No, it, it kind of came out of uh, nowhere, but I but 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 I love it, and I love yeah. writers, and I love working with. Uh, teams of writers. Well, and it's amazing too that you've been able to and continue to be able to have kind of a hand in both worlds. Uh, and then our final question here is from uh, at Betty and Jughead, clearly a mm-hmm. fan. Um, will we? This isn't a spoiler, but will we see Betty's cat caramel? You know, you will see a version of that, and and uh, we really, I, I love all the pets in the Archieverse, and and I was like, we got to have caramel. And 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 you know at that point we already had Archie's dog Vegas, and the producer, one the line producer at the time was like, Roberto, we got dogs, we got this, we got this. Please, please, do not add a cat. Don't 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 add a cat. <laughs> and I was like, but it's it's. And he's like, just just don't add a cat. And and it, so I was like, okay okay. And 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 in true keeping with the Riverdale tone, we had a pretty ghoulish fate. Uh, for Caramel that that I'm happy Caramel has been spared for the moment. Okay, good. Hey, this has been amazing. Thank you for the of time. Course, thank These you are, so much. We could talk for hours in a day and do an entire series on this, but uh, this is super exciting. And we're going to continue the uh, Welcome to Riverdale podcast ever after each episode. We're awesome. going to talk to some more writers, editors, and then stars as they become available Great. in the coming weeks. Great. Uh, thank you so much for being Pleasure. Thanks, Bob. If you are looking to reach out to the Welcome to Riverdale podcast, uh, you can find us on Twitter at podcast or at uh, oh lord, I'm I'm losing my mind at uh, Riverdale Pcast, uh, or you can type in Welcome to Riverdale. We're available there. We'll be on. Uh, we're going to be in Facebook. We got the Facebook account. Uh, Instagram. We'll be on Instagram. Also, uh, you can email us at welcome to Riverdale at Gmail. I'm Bob Barth. Until next week. Join me in welcoming to the field our very own River Vixens and their special guest stars, my daughter Josie and her pussycats. Hey, shawty, you're my candy girl. The kind with the swirls. Oh, so good, baby, out of this world. Look so sweet, but I love with your curves. Every time you speak, conversation like sir. S-U-G-A-R, you ain't her. Oh, honey, honey, put money on that fur. Let's keep it in the circle, do everything I deserve. Baby, want your sugar, I'm ready to get sir. Sugar.
Riverdale. New hit series Thursday at 9, 8 central on The CW. Rick, move your head.